Hey there. What if I told you you don't have to live beneath God's best for you? It's just a matter of exchanging your carnal mind with the mind of Christ. Everything that you will ever become, ever accomplish and do, starts in your mind. Your mind is powerful. You invent with it, you create with it, you set goals with it, and you create your future with it. Your mind is absolutely extraordinary. And an extraordinary life starts with an extraordinary mind. I want to encourage you. You don't have to live as a victim of circumstances anymore, especially when it comes to your own life. You have the ability to change your life by changing your thoughts. So as we explore in this first installment entitled The Extraordinary Mind, I'm challenging you to get your head in the game, regulate your thoughts, and dare to live the life of your dreams. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to my new series entitled The Power of Intentions. I've been talking with a lot of people, whether they were in industry specific professions or they were entrepreneurs and businessmen, businesswomen, decision makers, even those that are in new businesses, they are new entrepreneurs, uh, the millennials, Generation Z been talking to a lot of people lately and everyone's trying to figure out how do I navigate this new normal? And I've been telling everyone, you know, the world into which you were born no longer exists. And there's so much change that's going on. And how do you navigate the waves of change without being swept away by those same changes? And I decided, well, perhaps one of the best things for me to do is to weigh in when it comes to um, helping individuals to find the tools for success, the tools for prosperity, the tools to overcome their greatest challenges. And as I was praying, the Lord began to speak to me about a particular text in the book of Luke chapter 14, verse 28 to 30. As I was reading this particular text, the word intent uh, jumped out and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I want you to begin to teach on the power of intention. Luke 14, 28, 30 reads, For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he hath sufficient to finish it? Unless haply, after he hath set, he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. We're um, in inviting you into a, a dialogue that I want to have with you, um, a series where prayerfully you would be empowered to live a more successful life, a more meaningful life, and you will, at the end of a week or a month or the end of a year, you would actually end strong. And it always starts with intentions. I know a lot of people have dreams, but being able to put feet to those dreams is another thing. So have you ever wondered how some people seem to succeed at whatever they do and others don't? I believe it's because they have harnessed the faculty of their mind called intention. We know that the mind is, is, is different from the brain. The brain is physical, but the mind is spiritual. It's a part of your soul. And we are soulish beings. We are not just physical beings and spiritual beings. We're soulish beings. And your soul houses your mind, your will, and your emotions. And so when we talk about the mind, we're talking about you operating at a higher level, a higher frequency when it comes to you either pursuing an aspiration, a dream, or a goal, or you engaging in relationships, or you uh, carving out a path to your success. There are so many people now that are either jobless or individuals that are saying, okay, where I'm working is not fulfilling, it's not connecting with my, to my purpose and my passion, and they're trying to figure out what they should be doing in life. 
But before we delve into the discussion of intention, I want to briefly discuss with you the power of your mind, which intentions finds its origin. So let's just do a broad stroke and go wide before we go deep. Psychologically speaking, when we talk about the mind, it's really a set of cognitive faculties. It enables you to think. It enables you to be aware. It gives you consciousness. Uh, it gives you the ability of thinking and having perception and judgment and memory. So when we talk about the mind, the mind is so very important because it's that characteristic that separates the hom homo sapien uh, from the animal kingdom. So the difference between you and a lion or orangutan is the fact that you have a mind that has the faculties of judgment, of memory, of thinking, of perception, of awareness and consciousness. And this awareness is not just awareness using the five physical senses for determining and interacting and interpreting the things that are going on around you, but it's also an awareness that you are separate from every other thing that's around you. Your mind gives you the ability to move beyond those knee-jerk responses, those emotional responses, and goes beyond instinct. There's so many different animals that do have memory. They do have the ability to think. They do have the ability to project or even anticipate. But what animals don't have is the ability to think about their thoughts. And we're not just beings that are driven by instinct or basic drives. God said that he made us higher than animals. So that means that we have to be able to raise the level of our frequency. And I don't want you to be afraid of that word thinking that I'm talking about something that is new age when in fact I'm really not. And we're gonna bring up that topic of frequency and download it within scripture so you can really understand how powerful your mind is. And it is a travesty if you are a born again believer and if you are in pursuit of, number one, pleasing God, and number two, maximizing your potential, it's a travesty that you go through life only using a small, um, a small fraction or percentage of the capacity of your mind and live most of your life unconscious of the fact that you are actually one of God's greatest expressions of his brilliance and his intelligence. And not only that, he gives you as a gift to humanity. And so you are here during this time, during this generation, and with these inflection points because of what you are individually carrying um, for pushing humanity forward and bringing solutions to world problems. And I know that's a lot to ingest at the beginning of my message, but you've got to understand that you are here for such a time as this, and it's going to take the renewal of your mind so you are no longer just thinking based on uh, cultural conditioning and conspiracy theories and propaganda. It's time for you to get your mind back. And once you are able to operate with a mind that is liberated, you are able to make a difference in this world. We talk about mind mastery. Those of you that have gone through uh, personal development, those of you that read any kind of self-help book, one of the major themes is mindset mastery. And this is not a new age uh, concept. The Bible said being renewed in the spirit of your mind. It talks to us from the book of Philippians about whatsoever things are true and honest and just and lovely and praiseworthy. And you want to be able to think on those things. And this is all about mindset mastery. So I've read scriptures and I studied and I began to dig deep for all of the pearls of revelation that I could possibly bring to this particular series. And so having read what the psychological description is of the mind, I wanted to come up with my own personal description. 
And having read about uh, God having a mind and giving us a mind because we're created in the image and after the likeness of God, I determine, and this is my definition, to always see the mind and perceive the mind and encourage you to embrace this description that I have of the mind beside the psychological one or what you will find in the dictionary. So my definition of the mind is that it is an innovative, goal-oriented, wealth-generating, future-creating, destiny-altering machine. But just let's break it down. Your mind is an innovative machine. So the question that I want to ask you is, where does your future come from? And most people probably would answer either, I don't know, it comes from God, um, or my future is just out there. But that's not true because even though God said, I know the plans that I have for you, the plans of good, not of evil, to bring you to an expected end, the question is, have you been conversing with God lately? And have you allowed him to download his ideas and give you sparks of inspiration or even allow the Holy Spirit to give you revelation of these amazing thoughts that God has for you? But to answer the question, it's easy for me to answer because the scripture says that God has placed eternity in our heart. And the word heart is actually translated mind. So where does your future comes from? It comes from within you. And you are creating your future. You are creating your destiny. You are innovating your reality one thought at a time, one image at a time. So your future comes from within you. Where you end up tomorrow, the end of the week, where you end up at the end of the month, the end of the year, is all going to be determined by what's going on in your mind, what's going on in your heart. So your mind is an innovative, goal-oriented. You've got to be able to put your mind to work. You can't just wake up with dreams and visions and not create and engineer goals. You've got to be able to wake up and set your intentions towards doing something, creating something, finishing something. And so many people uh, go through life and they suffer from near success syndrome because they don't set their intention to finish something. But that's the responsibility of your mind. Your mind operates its best when you're able to establish goals for it. Your mind is an innovative, goal-oriented, wealth-generating future-creating, destiny-altering machine. Um, human beings are the only ones of God's creation that has the ability to be anything they want at any given time. So that means that if you don't like where you are today, you're merely one thought away from being somewhere else tomorrow. The question is, where is that somewhere else? And this is why my book entitled Hello Tomorrow becomes one of the greatest books that I've ever written because it deals with vision. I've always said your feet will never take you where your mind has never been. And so many people are controlled by other people's opinion of them, controlled by the news feed, controlled by social media, controlled by um, uh, conspiracy theories, controlled by propaganda. Uh, controlled by other people. And it's time for you to take back your personal power. And so living an extraordinary life starts with an extraordinary mind. And when we look at the mind, psychologically, my own personal definition, spiritually speaking, your mind is actually a feature of your soul. The Bible refers to the mind, like I said earlier, as the heart. If you would turn with me to Proverbs 23 and 7, it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. The word heart is not the physical um, organ that keeps you alive. The word heart there is mind. So when God created mankind, he equipped him with this extraordinary, spiritually permeated mind that created, that created his future that altered the realities in his spheres of influence. 
And when we go to the book of Genesis, we discovered that Adam loved God and he loved God with his mind and he served God with his mind. One of the things that the Apostle Paul says in his, in, in his conversation in the book of Romans chapter 7, verse 25, he said, thanks be to God through Christ our Lord. So then on the one hand, I myself with my mind am serving the law of God, but on the other hand with the flesh, the law of sin. And so it becomes an issue of mind over matter. I'm sure that you've heard that colloquial expression. You don't have to live beneath God's best for you if you replace your carnal mind with the mind of Christ. Turn with me to the book of Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. And I want to read this because it's brilliantly written by Paul again. He said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. That word let, you see that word in Genesis, let there be light, let there be light. So the word let simply means that there are prohibiting forces that has determined that you're not going to have the mind of Christ. And so the battlefield you have heard is actually in your mind. Everything that you will ever become starts in your mind. Everything that you would ever accomplish starts in your mind. Everything that you feel about yourself starts with the thought in your mind. Your mind is very powerful. So allow the mind of Christ to permeate your mind so that you have high level thinking so that you can then tap into the extraordinary capacity of your mind. A lot of people think too low about themselves. They question their identity, they question their ability. So they have their dreams that they park to the side because they look at extenuating circumstances to determine whether or not their dreams are possible. The Bible said, with God, all things are possible. The word intention, intention, the power of intention, comes from this Latin word, intentio. It means to stretch out. It means to strain or exert, or it means to, to have effort or put effort into something or to pay attention to something. It has the idea of someone who is doing something and then their attention is turned to something else that may be challenging and their mind stretches to accommodate the challenge. Um, so literally it means stretches to, to stretch out, uh, to stretch out the faculty, to stretch out the intellectual capacity of the human mind. I reminded, I'm reminded of the scriptures that Jesus said, uh, foxes have hole, the birds of the ear have nests, but the son of man had not where to lay his head. In other words, he had all of these ideas and philosophies and revelation that he wanted to share with the general population, but there was no one that could had the ability to stretch their mind to accommodate these revelations that he was giving them. And I've de determined that so many people live restricted lives because of the limitations that they have been, that they have placed on their own minds. And it's happening through cultural conditioning. I'm thinking of Pavlov's dog, where he was trying to figure out uh, whether or not a dog would be able to be conditioned to salvate. And the study started actually uh, with how dogs salvate, but then it, it, he went on and um, he coined this phrase, classical conditioning. So he rings a, a bell and he gives the dog a piece of meat and the dog um, eats the meat, enjoys the meat. He rings the bell again, gives the dog a piece of meat rings the bell and the dog begins to salvate and it gives the dog the meat. Then he takes the meat away from the equation and he rings the bell and the dog is still salvating. And this is what you call classical conditioning. And this is happening all the time. We call it propaganda where it's this pitch and peer that goes on where social media now knows how to just ring a bell and those that are users are actually salvating and they're salvating for products and they're salvating for goods. And now, you know, to tell you the truth, social media has become good because we're using AI now. And AI is studying your habits 
And then eventually, uh, while you're reading your email, all of a sudden on the right side, you have a stream of offerings to you. It's either medications or clothes or cough medicine or whatever you have been focusing on in that week. Uh, AI picks up your habits and then it rings that bell. It, it, it basically is watching how you spend. It's looking at your habits and then it's anticipating, oh, wait, this person has been sitting on this site and perhaps we need to offer them this. So when it comes to living uh, for God, we have to understand that, that we're talking about uh, being renewed in the spirit of your mind. And I believe that this is going to be a season that God is going to be able to restore us to such an extent that we're going to live in the most powerful state that we have ever lived in. In the days to come, we're going to witness a new species of believers who will become unstoppable. And they're going to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And this is going to happen at the level of their thought life. Your mind is given to you by God, and he wants you to use your mind, not only to serve him, but serve uh, the world that we live in. One of the things that Jesus said in the book of Matthew, verse 22 to 37, he's talking about loving God and serving God. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and, on, and all your soul and with all your mind. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And so when we talk about the mind, we're not just talking about um, some new age or we're not talking about some new age phenomenon. We're talking about a biblical concept. When you read about scripture, scripture is just replete with, with um, instances where the mind was actually mentioned. In Ephesians, 40, in Ephesians 4.23, if you will go there with me, please, it says, being renewed in the spirit of your mind. Romans 12 and 2 says, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. And we're talking about you being unplugged from the matrix, from this classical conditioning, from, from um, uh, society molding and shaping you into living like an automaton, where you're going through life and the proverbial bell is ringing and you're buying whatever they want you to buy, dressing however you want to dress. And every time you're losing day by day connection with your purpose and your potential, and with your ability to be an agent of change and your ability to make a difference. And it all happens at the level of your mind. 1 Corinthians 2.16 said, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Philippians 2 and 2 says, Make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Romans 8 and 6, for the mind, for the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. Romans 1, 28 says, and just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper. Luke 24 45 says, then he opened their minds to understand scriptures. And so a lot of times our minds are blocked. We're reading, we're hearing, but we don't have understanding. You have understanding at the level of your mind. Most, most people believe that when you uh, become a Christian and you join a church, you check your mind at the door. But the gospel is preached so that your mind is being re renewed. 2 Corinthians 5.13 says, for if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are of sound mind, it is for you. So when we talk about mindset mastery, it's not just you serving God 
Are you having an awareness and an understanding and a consciousness of your significance in the world? It's for what you do for the world, what you do in the world. Your mind is there so that you can look at situations and circumstances and not seeing yourself as a victim of circumstances becoming a solution. And until you understand that you are here for what you are carrying, you, you, uh, can uh, adapt a master mind because you're a piece of the master and God is living in you. And when he calls himself to you and when he uses you, it's not really about you so that you are not puffed up with pride. It's about the peace of God himself that he places in you, that he wants to find expression in this world, within your community, within your family, where he's raising you up to be like a Joseph was in the economic space, to be like a Deborah was in the legal space, to be like Esther was in the humanitarian space. And so when you look at the Bible, I want you to begin uh, to see it as not just a historical, a theological document. I want you to see it as your life manual. I want you to see it as your strategic book that God has given you so that you know how to run your play in this world. Romans eleven thirty four says, for who has known the mind of the Lord or who be, be, became his counselor? Romans 12, 16, be of the same mind toward one another. Daniel 4, 16 says, let his mind be changed from that of a man and let a beast's mind be given unto him. And it's interesting when we go through scriptures, we see how the mind is very important, is very relevant. And today it needs to be a front and center stage because mental health is a huge, huge um, uh, problem and issue. And I believe that once we get through this pandemic, uh, the next major issue that will become a global issue will be mental health, the mental state um, of, of humanity. And this is why I love scriptures. is more than just a, a, a theological book or an ancient book. It's a book about life and how to do life. And it gives you practical solutions and tools for you to live life, not just with purpose, but you to live life successfully and prosperously. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, the steadfast of mine, you will keep in perfect peace because he trusts in you. The King James Version says it like this, thou would keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. And so the things that we are meditating on, the things that are distracting us is actually affecting us. And whatever affects us affects our destiny, affects our emotions. And so I believe that God is going to begin to speak to us at the level of our mind. I believe that we are going to have encounters during our times of devotions and when we're meditating on scriptures and when we have our times of prayer where God is going to begin to heal the human mind. I believe that one of the greatest panaceas for the human mind is scriptures. What you meditate on, what you think about all day, what you meditate on is influencing your destiny. And God spoke to man and Joshua and said to him, look, meditate on my word day and night. Therein you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. And so one of the secrets to success is what you do with your mind and how you manage your thought. Again, we call it mindset mastery. And um, this is what God wants for us. He does not want us to become a part of the problem, but he wants us to master our mind. When we look at the Bible, scriptures clearly indicate the importance of the mind. Today, we have personal development and the whole craze is about mindset mastery. And it's all about uh, uh, maintaining an elevated mindset. But long before we had the term personal development and mindset mastery, this is what Colossians chapter three, verse two says, set your mind on things above, 
not on things that are on the earth. Set your mind, establish your mind. And to set your mind means that you're operating from what I call a realm of intentionality. This is next level thinking. So I believe that in this season, we are going to experience next level thinking. This starts with the reprogramming of your mind, and that's the word repent that Jesus used and John the Baptist used. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The gospel is actually preached so that our minds can be reprogrammed. And since the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, humanity began to operate at a low level frequency. And when Adam fell, he fell from a very high dimension of thinking, a dimension of dominion where he was fruitful, multiplied, replenished, subdued, had dominion, he lived healthily, and he was productive. And when he fell, he fell into low-level thinking where his frequency was very, very low. The frequency of his power and his authority. And he lost his full effectiveness in the earth realm as God's representative. And so here are two principles that are important when we begin to introduce you to the power of intention and the extraordinary power of the mind, which is this particular installment in our series um, called Intent or the Power of Intention. When your frequency is low, your authority will be low. It's going to be strained or ineffective. And the manifestations of your declarations and prayers are going to be slow. So when your frequency is low, even if you're praying and you're decreeing and you're doing the work, the actual manifestation is going to be slow. But when your frequency is high, your authority is going to be strong, it's going to be effective, you're going to be influential. And the manifestations from your declarations and your prayers are going to be immediate, quick, fast, and in a hurry. You'll be able to decree things today and see it manifested, maybe the next minute or the next day. And so when we talk about elevating your frequency, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Jesus was the word of God. And when you go into the book of Genesis, when God said, let there be light, the Bible said immediately there was light. Why? Because he was speaking at an elevated realm or in it from an elevated realm um, of creativity where the frequency was high. Now, when we talk about frequency, again, we're not talking about something that's new age. We're talking about something that is, is biblical because when you think about things like faith, um, when you think about things like grace, we're talking about another level of power, another level of manifestation. Salvation allows you to operate in higher frequencies of thoughts because grace operates on a high spiritual plane. It's a high spiritual dimension where things that are impossible in the low level of humanity, it's elevated to the level of God when it comes to faith. So you don't have to live programmed by the world system through conspiracy theories and propaganda. God is able to download his thoughts in your mind through the person of the Holy Spirit. He's the revealer of the heart of God, the mind of God, the will of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 says, For to us God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depth of God. 1 Corinthians 2 and 11, For who among you knows the thoughts of man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the thoughts of God no man knows except the spirit of God. So when we talk about revelation and when we talk about insight, whether that revelation is coming from you reading the word of God or even in prayer where God will begin to reveal things to you, where you're operating in the spirit um, in, in the spirit realm, where you're praying prophetic prayers, where you have prophetic insight, where you have access to the gifts of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, where you're operating in a dimension of revelation that puts you head 
head and shoulders uh, above all of your contemporaries where people are beginning to say, well, how do you know these things? And how are you able to do these things? And how did you defy the odds? Or how did you overcome your circumstances? Or how do you, did you do what is impossible? You're doing it because of the level, high level of thought. You are interacting with the thoughts of God and God is speaking to you and you know how to tap into that frequency. And so instead of us being afraid of this one word frequency, I'm going to say it over and I really want to get this in your spirit because when Adam fell, he lost his ability to use the total capacity of his mind to, re to remain connected to the mind of God. His cognitive ability went from digital to analog, from satellite to FM, and eventually AM, where there was a lot of static, a lot of interference, um, a lot of misinterpretation, and a lot of chatter. So when you get saved, God increases your spiritual frequency and takes you from AM to FM to satellite, and eventually, uh, just to use this as an example, to 5G. But he renews the spirit of your mind. In other words, you operate at a higher level of thinking. Your frequency increases. And I want it really drilled down when I talk about frequency because I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a spiritual form of energy that cannot be seen with the natural eye. God gives you spiritual acuity through revelation, through inspiration, through prophetic insight. So when we talk about this frequency, we also have to talk about energy. So energy, all matter produces energy. So that means that your brain, your body is producing energy. Electricity is energy. Speed is energy. All forms of energy causes some reaction or it causes some result. So the things that are going on in your life is not just happening happenstance. The, the, you are participating in it. And even though you don't, you don't understand it, the very thoughts that you're thinking is a form of energy. And the very words that you are speaking is a form of energy. Your fear is a form of energy. Your love is a form of energy. Words are energy. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And so when we look at the word of God, we are looking at the fact that even your words, whether it's an in internal dialogue that you are having with yourself, whether it is you uh, reminiscing some hurt, some pain, or something that someone said to you over and over again, you are operating on a certain level of certain frequency, and you are emitting energies that is changing everything in the world. When you look at the whole idea of the words that you were speaking, the Bible said in Genesis chapter one, God himself said, let there be light and there was light. So words are a form of energy, whether it's internal dialogue that you are having with yourself or whether these are words that you sp are speaking out um, of your mouth. The scripture says that God created us in his image and after his likeness. There's a scripture that says, so to the wind, weep a whirlwind. In other words, there's a cause and an effect for everything in the universe. And many of us do not see ourselves as a cause. We think things are happening happening to us, but there's an energy that you are emitting and we call it faith. We call it unbelief, but faith it operates on a frequency and unbelief operates on a lower frequency. So the question is every day when you wake up, how are you showing up? The scripture says in Job 22, 28, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. And when we begin to understand that thoughts are things and they carry a certain frequency and the thoughts leave you. Thoughts are powerful enough to attract people to you, to repel people from you. Have you ever walked in a room 
and someone was smiling at you and you felt really good about that person? Or have you ever walked in a, a building and you saw someone and they, they just gave off like a bad vibe? It is because you were picking up a frequency. God was giving you an insight. And so when we talk about thoughts, thoughts are energies that troubles like a wave. And we talk about making waves. When you have negative um, thoughts, you're making negative waves. And some people live in a tsunami. Everything around them is full of confusion. And so when we talk about your mind, we talk about sensing someone's thoughts, or we use the word a vibe. And we want to be able not to only to pick up people's vibes, but we want to pick up God's vibes as well. Jeremiah 29, 11 said, I know the thoughts I think towards you thoughts of good, not of evil to bring you to an expected end. Those are the thoughts. That's how you want to vibe. That's how you want, you, you want to be thinking. You want to elevate your thinking so you can elevate your life. And it all starts in your mind. What have you been thinking lately? And I don't have to cut your mind open to find out what your thoughts have been about your life, about your family, about your children, about your finances. All I need to do is look at the results. And for every result, there is a cause and very few people will take responsibility for what is happening in their life. And unless you take responsibility for everything that's going on in your life, you will always show up as a victim. Something would always be happening to you. People will quote unquote, and I have these ear quotation marks. People are always doing something to you. But could things be the way they are because you are the way you are? And what one thing can you change that you can change everything? You can change how you use your mind. Proverbs 4.23 says, be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. So thoughts as well as physical words cause physical energy that directs your life and those uh, uh, things that happen in your life. In other words, your words create the reality in your world. Whether the words are silent, silent like thoughts that no one hears, that's internal dialogue, or whether it's audible words. Hosea says this in Hosea chapter eight, verse seven. He says this, for they have sown the wind and they shall weep, reap a whirlwind. In other words, when words come out of your mouth, the equal opposite will come back into your life. So the words are like a wind and the results is a whirlwind. Again, things are not just happening to you. They're happening because of you. And this is how powerful when we talk about, you know, the whole idea of a po the powerful mind and words and frequencies and energy. There was this scientist, uh, Japanese scientist, Dr. Uh, Mazuru Emoto, and he performed a series of experiments. And what he did was he exposed water to words, to prayer, to music, and to an environment. And he then took the water and he allowed these water, the water to be frozen. And he looked at the crystallized structure in water. And uh, this, the water that had been exposed to something that was beautiful, beautiful music and beautiful words, he would use words like, I love you and you're beautiful. Um, he went and took pictures of the crystals that they had formed and they were formed beautifully. And the words that had hard music, that had cussing and swearing in it, and an environment that was not um, healthy and, and happy, and words that were harsh and words of hatred that was spoken over the water, it formed these ugly crystallized um, structures within the water that had been frozen. And he concluded that words have power that it is affecting things around it, even if it cannot be seen by the human eye. And so before we get into our topic of, of intention, you've got to understand that you are not an innocent bystander when it comes to your life. We talk about what the devil is doing in our lives and how we have enemies and how we have to fight Goliath and bears and lions. But very few of us 
will take personal responsibility for the things that are going on around us and, 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 and to us and, and, and trace it all the way back to an attitude, to a mindset, to a thought, to words that have been spoken, that have been negative, that have been contrary to the will of God. We don't see that we're pitching on low level frequencies when it comes to our expectations, when it comes to our performance, when it comes to even working with individuals. Many of us see individuals, we are already expecting individuals to hurt us, to lie to us, to betray us. And we don't understand that every thought, every anticipation is actually sending these waves out and we're pitching on a frequency and the energy is going out. We hear the new age is talking about send the energy out into the universe. And then we, we, we call it, well, this is really satanic. But a portion of that is true, that we don't understand that when you show up in this world, you have the power to shift atmospheres. And we see it even in the book of Joshua, where Joshua was instructed by God. You don't need to use scud missiles. You don't need patriarchs um, to be exploding. You don't need guns. You don't need bombs. What you're going to do to bring this wall down, you're going to use the frequency of your voice and the very frequency of your voice is going to change the molecular structure of the walls and you are not going to have to use physical energy. You are just going to use your voice. And they marched around the wall. They shifted the atmosphere. And when they shouted, the Bible said the walls came down. And that was because God was revealing to us in the book of Joshua, how powerful the human voice is. And when we talk about words, when we talk about sound, you cannot have a word unless you have thoughts because words are thoughts that are audibly expressed. But words that are not audibly expressed are called our thoughts. It's called our internal dialogue. One of the things that Proverbs 18:21 says is that death and life is in the power of the tongue, the power of your tongue. Things die. Things are created. Things come to your life. Abundance, uh, uh, opportunities when you're able to speak it out loud and your thoughts, your words, your beliefs are producing an energy around you. When the disciples were trying to cast a demon out of a young boy, they couldn't. And Jesus came and bam, the demon came right out. And they said, why couldn't we cast this demon out? And Jesus clearly said, look, it's because of your unbelief. It wasn't the strength of the demon. And as you go through life, it is not the strength of your enemy, whether your enemy is a lack whether your enemy is sickness, whether your enemy is disease, whether your enemy is hatred, whether your enemy is unemployment, it is never the strength of your enemy. It is the strength of your belief. And the Bible said there is going to be a performance of those things that believe. What do you believe? What do you believe about God? What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about your potential? What do you believe? What do you believe about your significance? And there is going to be a performance at that level. And your belief is emitting this energy. And I don't want you to feel again, like we're talking about something that new, is new age. You know it. You can feel it when someone loves you. You can feel it when someone is lying to you. Even if they say, no, I'm not lying. I'm telling you the truth. But there is something in you that can sense it because everything works at a particular frequency. Even the Bible says that there is a frequency to everything in the uni universe. There is a, a certain level of the anointing that sits on the sun and another anointing or glory. The Bible talks about glory that is a part of the moon and glory that is a part of things that are created, even the glory that is on the individual. And when we think about the whole idea of us just talking about the energy and, 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 and we, we have another 
source of energy and that's the energy of your emotions. And many times we are decreeing a thing and we are praying and we're believing God for things, but then our emotions are counteracting what God wants to do for us. But listen to what God said. And this is him saying it in Luke 17 and six. If you have the faith as a mustard seed, you're going to say to this tree, be pulled out, but be pulled up at the roots and be planted in the sea and it will obey you. This is the power of your words. Your words travel on a frequency. Your words are emitting. It's emitting um, the sound waves. Your words are emitting an energy. It's not just about your physical body. It's about your thoughts. It's about your attitude. It's about, about the words that you are speaking. And so when we talk about the whole idea of you showing up powerfully and you understanding the power of your own mind, You've got to understand that your physical body is only a conduit of your thoughts. And if you can change your thoughts, you could change your action. If you could change your thoughts, you could change what you become. If you can change your thoughts, you could change what you accomplish. If you can change your thoughts, you could change how far you go. If you could change your God thoughts, you can change uh, who's attracted to you. If you could change your thoughts, you could change your level of success. If you could change your thoughts, you could change your progress. And everything in the universe is responding. It's responding to your thoughts, responding to your words, responding to your action. Nothing happens by by chance, nothing happens by coincidence. To for every result, for every re, uh, for every encounter, for every what they call a chance meeting, there that is only a result. There is a a a um, cause to that. And what is happening around your life, you can measure it, and you can measure it by uh, by megahertz. And when I, when when you begin to understand how uh, we operate in in, in in the kingdom, we operate at the level of our faith. The Bible says this, uh, Mark 11, 22 to 24. He said, have faith in God. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples and those that were following him. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say, unto you what things soever you desire when you pray believe that you receive them and you shall have them he's talking about you operating at another level of faith faith is a kingdom technology faith it alters the frequency of your thoughts it alters the frequency of your words it alters the frequency of your prayers it alters the frequency of your declaration so that you are able to call those things that be not as though they were Hebrews 11 and 1 says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith causes you to operate in next level thinking and next level behavior. If you want to take your business to the next level, if you want to take your life to the next level, if you want to take your ministry to the next level, you've got to have next level faith. And that means that you are operating in a different level of frequency. And so let me dig this uh, or, or excavate this a little bit more. When we talk about frequencies, frequencies are measured by something called a megahertz. For instance, measuring in megahertz is, is found everywhere. So when you look at processed canned food, processed canned food has zero megahertz in terms of frequency. It does not do your body good. And anything has, that has zero frequency, it means that it is dead. That's why you should set your intentions on eating whole food, light foods, vegetables, and fruit. And that's why my concern is for food deserts. And this is why so many people are getting ill and getting sick is because they are constantly introducing themselves to dead food. And so if you want to increase the level of your frequency, 
And when we talk about the level of your frequency, if the frequency goes to zero, that means you're dead. And this is why when you have a cold, your, the megahertz that are measured in terms of the energy that you have, it's lower than someone that is full of life and dynamic and eating organic food and they're, they're very, very healthy. So you can measure the, the frequency or the energy in the human body and it's determined by megahertz. So if you look at the food desert, more and more people in that community is getting sick. And that is because they're not eating live food. To eat death is to die. So that means that those of you that where it's possible, you want to be able to eat more organic food that has a higher frequency than conventional foods that have lower frequency. And for those of you that drink coffee, it is found scientifically that coffee lowers a person's frequency by approximately 14 megahertz. So that morning coffee is not doing you any good. It's causing you, your, your thoughts to, to be um, suppressed. So where you should be sharp, where you could be innovative, where you could be cutting, cutting edge in your thinking, where you could be functioning at a higher level, you have lowered the frequency of your thoughts by 14 megahertz just by drinking coffee. So if I were you, I wake up in the morning and I would drink hot water and squeeze some lemon, lemon in it because it will increase your, your thinking ability. Dry herbs, 15 to 22 megahertz. Fresh fruits, it, 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 if you measure it, it's 20 to 27 megahertz. So that means canned fruits, zero megahertz. Uh, packaged fruits, zero mega, megahertz. But fresh food, 20 to 27 megahertz. So rather than eating one of those health bars, which is processed, and they said that it's healthy for you, but it is dead. It is not doing you any good. All of the enzyme has been killed off. So that means you're operating on sugar. And I challenge you, all of you that are eating all those health bars, turn it over. And when you read how many carbs and how much sugar has been added to those quote unquote healthy uh, protein bars, you can begin to understand on the one hand, it seems like you have energy, but what you just got is a dopamine hit from sugar. In other words, you are feeding your addiction and you know what happens with addicts. Addicts never think straight. They're thinking about their next hit. They're thinking about their next injection. They're thinking about, they're not thinking straight. And a lot of us, we may say, oh, I'm not an addict. I don't use drugs. I don't use alcohol, but you love that sugar. And having a sugar high is equal to being a heroin user. And so I want you to begin to set your intention on um, developing better health strategies. And a lot of things that we say is the enemy may be us. We may be doing it to ourselves. <clears throat> and the enemy will simply say, oh, I'll take the credit just as long as I got ear time. The more you talk about me, the more you're going to think about me, and the more conscious you're going to become with evil. So what I want you to do now is to be, begin to understand that these things are in your control. I love the whole idea. So you got fresh herbs that's 20 to 27 megahertz, fresh fruits that are 20 to 27 megahertz. But watch this. When it comes to essential oil, like the olive oil and rose oil, which is the, 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 the highest of all natural substance, that operates somewhere between, watch this, 52 megahertz to 320 megahertz. So Dr. Trim, what are you saying to me? James chapter five, verse 14 says this, is any man sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. So that means that as soon as you get anointed with oil, Something physically happens to you, but something spiritually. What happens is it increases the, the energy, it, it increases your energy automatic 
because you're using pure oil. So wherever you put that oil, it means that parts of your body that has been sick or compromised by viruses and compromised by disease, it, you introduce life to it and it increases, it increases your energy. And if you increase your energy, you can increase your health. That's number one. And this is on the natural. But on the spiritual end of it, watch this. That oil represents the activity of the Holy Spirit in your life. And the Holy Spirit brings to you the energy that we call healing. So you've got this spiritual source and the Holy Spirit is operating on a very high frequency. And then you've got the oil. And when you combine the two, you have a miracle. And what we call a miracle is simply a shift in your energy. So why am I digging so deeply? And why am I talking about megahertz and how megahertz can measure? It is because you can measure the thoughts of humanity and it's measured by the megahertz and is measured by the frequency. And so that means that you can literally raise the, 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 the level of your thinking just through prayer and just through laying on of hands. And this is why the enemy fights it. The, the enemy fights us using oil. We think that it's spooky spiritual, but the oil, even though it represents the person, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit operating in your life that you come into agreement with, at the same time, that oil is increasing your energy uh, somewhere between 52 megahertz and 320 megahertz. And this is the mystery of the olive oil. And so rather than you using the oils that you fry in, and I don't want to name them. That's why I'm stumbling. I don't want to name the oils, but most of those oils are dead. Most of them are sour. And the moment you fry in it, the moment you're using it is the moment you're introducing death and your body has to adjust itself. This is why when you eat fried food, you notice your energy is gone. Have you ever noticed that when you eat fast food, you don't have the energy that you would normally have? Like, like if you ate an apple or if you ate a fresh, um, uh, uh, a fresh salad, when you have the ability now to really cooperate with heaven's best for you, when it comes to your health, I want you to be intentional with what you are eating, what you are introducing to your body, because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And a lot of us are sugar addicts. And so when we come back and we talk about frequencies and we talk about energies, we are not just talking about this in terms of um, the context of what you do in the world, where we're talking about the context of how you walk in the world. The Bible said that you should be in the world, but not of this world. So if you're not of this world, that means you cannot think like the world. And so Philippians four and eight says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things have a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. If you're going to elevate your thinking, if you're going to see your life go to the next level, if you're going to experience success and prosperity, it's going to be because you begin to understand the power of your mind. You begin to understand what you think and believe affects everything around you. It affects you. It affects everyone around you. We are our brother's keeper. What you think about another person, they rise to that level of expectation. What you think about your son, what you think about your husband, what you think about government, what you think about this world is actually flowing from you like ripples out of you. And so if you are living in a city that is, is a fit Filled with sickness and filled with disease, do not curse that city. You want to begin to understand <clears throat> that what is going on, God is going to deliver you from limiting beliefs, from fear, from guilt, from shame, from helplessness, from hopelessness. I call it from 
um, uh, uh, doubt and sickness and defeat. He's going to deliver you so that you can begin to live life on purpose so that you can set your intention to become everything that God has wired you to become so that you could change the frequency of your communication about yourself, about your family, about your community, about your government, about your industry, about everything in the universe so that you could speak well over this world so that you can decree what you want to see and not what you don't want to see. And so that you could change your life by just changing your thoughts. And when you change your thoughts, you're able to change the frequency. You're able to change the energy that is floating around you. And you're able to rise to another level of thinking to be restored <clears throat> into a place where you literally have the power to change not only your spiritual de destiny, but your financial financial destiny so that you could take God's word and apply it to your life, to your finances, to your business, so that you can be pitching at the level of a co-creator so that you indeed can let your light so shine before man that man would see your good works and glorify God, which is in heaven. And so my instruction to you today is this, that you begin to regulate your thoughts. I instruct you according to Joshua chapter the one verse eight to nine, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate <clears throat> therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. Have I, I commended thee be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with you, with thee, whithersoever thou goest. And so my second instruction to you is get your head in the game and take your emotions out of it. If life is a game, I need your head in it. I need you to be thinking at another level. I need you to remove the emotions from out of the equations of your life, from out of the, the equations of your decision. Feel feel the emotion, but don't let the emotions feel you feel it. F E E L feel the emotions, but don't let the emotions feel you. F I L L do not become an emotional individual. Do not knee jerk in your situations. You have control over what's going on in your life. Where does your future come from? It comes from within you. It comes from your thoughts. It comes from your attitude. It comes from your belief. And that is creating a frequency that is creating waves that is flowing away from you. That is coming back to you. And so when we talk about spiritual warfare, I have to remind you that spiritual warfare often goes undetected by the mind because it, it, we, we get too emotional with it. But spiritual warfare is the highest form of, 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 of the highest form of spiritual warfare is the counsel of the human mind by any other spirit other than the spirit of the Lord. So when we talk about that, we begin to look in the Bible, how Adam experienced spiritual warfare and he caused him to doubt, uh, to doubt God, um, God's word over his life. And through doubt, um, the enemy was able to call, control his destiny and Adam fell. He fell from this high uh, level of thinking. He was operating on a different kind of frequency. And when he fell, he lost so much. He lost his congruency. He lost his individuality. He lo lost the uniqueness of his identity. He lost his spiritual capacity. He lost his divine genius. He lost his spiritual connection activity with God. When Adam fell, he fell from this realm uh, where, we, where he was operating on a very high level of frequency. And he fell from a realm of dominion into a realm of deception. He, he fell from that, that realm of authority and he fell from that realm where he was a co-creator with God. You are a co-creator on a daily basis. You are creating the realities in your life. What if you could take the faculties of your thought, the, 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 the natural uh, tendencies of your mind. What if you can harness that power and live at another level? You will begin to see wealth that will be
will be sustainable, businesses that will be scalable, brand equities that will increase. And you'll see a global, uh, national uh, distinction being put upon you as an individual. And the fall of man caused him to operate in a different level. And in this season, what God is doing, he's restoring us in the spirit of our mind so that we can use the full capacity of our mind. And what he is doing as a Christian through the word of God, he's reconditioning your mind. Most of what we do in life is a result, like I said, of classical dis, uh, conditioning. But I believe that in this season, what God is going to do, he's going to restore the incredible ability that he built into humanity through our mind. And I say to you that as we begin our series on the whole idea of intentionality, the purpose, the power of intention, you will begin that it starts with you understanding how powerful your mind is. Most of what is happening to us is not the devil. It's happening because we don't understand how powerful our minds are. And so as we end the first installment, I want to pray over you. I want God to give you the ability to think differently. And when you think differently, you're going to show up differently. And everything in your life is going to be able to change for the best. I want you to have elevated thinking. For the Bible says, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above and not beneath. And so I want to pray for you right now in Jesus' name. Our Father and our God, we thank you that you have given us our, our, our minds. And I pray that as we introduce this topic, there will be a greater understanding and a greater appreciation for who we are. We know that our minds are often a battleground. And so I decree and declare, Father, that you would guard our hearts and our minds through Jesus Christ and that you would make our mind your stronghold. I thank you, Father, that you're going to clear our mind of any thoughts that are contrary to you, that you will rid our thoughts that run rampant, um, and, 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 and then you will place your thoughts in our mind. I pray you would help us to focus on what is important, what is relevant, what is attached to a better future and a brighter future for ourselves, our family, our community. I decree we will no longer be controlled uh, by propaganda and by conspiracy theories. I decree and declare that your thoughts will be in the center of our lives. We set our intentions today to please you. We set our intentions, Father, to take care of our body, that our body is the temple of God. We set our intention to do everything that, that brings you glory. We set our intentions to seek first the kingdom of God and all of your righteousness, and all of these things will be added to us, whether it be wealth or success or prosperity or healing, whether it be happiness or joy or peace. I decree and declare it will be surely added to us. And in the midst of trials and turmoil, I pray, Father, that you would give us peace in our mind and calmness in our spirit. I pray that you would calm our hearts right now, that you would give us, even when we slumber and sleep, peaceful rest at night and worry-free days, that you would give us strength and clarity of mind to find purpose, to find direction, to find stability, that you would give us direction so that we can confidently walk in the path that you had laid out before us, that you would give us peace in our minds and in our hearts, that you would bless us every single day with your tender mercy and your loving kindness. Father, I pray that you would clear our consciousness. You said, blessed are the pure in spirit, for they shall see God. And we want to see you at work in our home and our family. And so, Father, whatever would hinder us, whatever would contaminate our consciousness, whether it is guilt or whether it is um, hatred, or whether it is revenge, I pray right now that the peace giver, you will cleanse our minds from those things that will keep us at a low level and that you would increase our frequency, our frequency of thought, that we would hope more, that we will believe more, and that we would do great things within our generation because we are not distracted. I pray, Father, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that you would bless us at the level of our mind in Jesus' name, amen. 
Well, I pray that you enjoyed the beginning, the first installment. And again, our series is on the power of intention, but we wanted to start out with something that's very strong to remind you how important your mind is. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've received practical principles about your extraordinary mind that lays the foundation for the upcoming installment on intention. So don't allow these words to fall on deaf ears. Refer to your notes, rewatch this teaching and continue to study so that you can receive the fullness of what this message has to offer you. I invite you to take action right now. Join us in reaching others by sharing this message and allow these teaching to bless others just as I hope it has blessed you. Like, share, and subscribe. Also, we remind you that you can partner with us. You can give your first fruit, your tithe, your seeds right now by visiting cindytremministries.org or by downloading the Cindy Trim app in your Apple or Google Play Store. Be encouraged today in knowing that our intercessory teams are praying for you. And as usual, it's always an honor and a pleasure to do life with you in real time. God bless. The Cindy Trim Ministries app just got even better. Dive into the brand new experience right now by updating or downloading the latest version of the app for free in the Apple or Google Play Store. The dynamic home screen keeps you up to date with the latest empowering articles, sermons, live streaming services, and a weekly arrangement of the most inspiring content available anywhere. Watch on-demand messages and begin leading your empowered life group today. Sign up now and receive your how-to handbook and discussion guides for each message. There's more empowerment at every click. Engage in the latest events hosted by Dr. Trim and find out when she's coming to a city near you. We've even made giving easier than ever before. You can donate now by selecting the Give button inside of the app. After creating your profile, giving will be as simple as putting in an amount and selecting donate. Download the Cindy Trim Ministries app now and begin your journey of empowerment with us today.